Good afternoon. You're watching us here on Halftime Report. Uh, this is me, Mangla Malu, with me, Ekta Batra, looking extremely strong for the market. And the biggest reason for that is uh, the good news that the Fed doled out last night by telling you that there could be three rate cuts that would happen on account of inflation, which is under control. But speaking of inflation, we also have the wholesale price index coming in uh, for the month of November on at the bottom of your screens. Hi, Ekta. Hi, Manglam. Yes, absolutely. So it's gone into inflation from deflation category. So that's the big headline which is coming for the WPI index this time round for the month of November. And I think this is uh, the first time that it is in inflation territory from March of 2022, uh, or rather March of 2023. So it is a multi-month high, you can say, when it comes to the WPI inflation. It is back into inflation ter territory after seeing months of deflation. As you can see, uh, the details are flashing on your screen. The manufactured products inflation, um, or rather deflation, is at around minus 0.6%. But the headline figure has come in at around 0.26% versus a minus 0.26% in the month of October. The details on your screen, primary articles inflation has come in at around 4.76%. So there's quite a spike up which has taken place there along with the food inflation also, which is at around 4.7% versus 1%. We do have Lata with us to tell us more. Uh, well, Lata, you know, this was expected. Yes, actually, people were expecting that this time it may be flat. Right. Uh, compared to that, it's come at a plus 0.26%. So inflation is a little worse than what uh, the analysts were expecting. I didn't do a poll because not everyone gives you a number. But the one or two who gave me told me it will be flat, like, you know, zero or minus uh, 0.05 thereabouts. That was the number I got. Compared to that, it's a plus uh, quarter percent. Mm -hmm. So it's slightly higher, but these are, you know, very small numbers. What perhaps we should worry about and should not be surprised is look at the food inflation. Yeah. This is the number. It's so positive that it is pulled up in spite of a very negative fuel inflation. See, all these, why are they negative? Right. Year ago, what was fuel price? Exactly. You know, a post Ukraine war. So year on year, WPI was negative because year ago, coal, uh, coal was very expensive. Hmm. Copper was very expensive. All these are big items in the WPI index and all these year on year have almost crashed because the Ukraine effect is behind us. And that's why we were having a long negative period. But now this positive, I think, is a little bit of a bad news because it's a little higher than expected. And it, Largely it, driven by food, but not entirely because manufacturing is positive. Right. Sorry. It's uh, driven by vegetables, the food, because the vegetable index is up 16.5%, uh, you know, year on year. So that it is was up 30% in exactly. CPI. So, so that also is not a shock. In CPI, the number was 30%. So the food index should not shock us. Mm. We were prepared for pulses uh, to be expensive. Likewise, uh, as you point out, vegetables. Cereals index is up 1.2% on the month. As you mm. point out, vegetables 16.5 uh, is on the month. Mm. So, I mean, the, this was expected. But I think what uh, we should note is that wholesale index, even for the manufacturing products, is almost entering flat today. Mm. Mm which means the negative impact uh, will move away. In a way, it may be good. It will also give us a higher nominal GDP. Right. Until now, sense. nominal GDP is very close to real GDP because of uh, the low WPI number that also gets erased, which is good. But uh, let's invite the expert uh, Aditi Nair, Chief Economist at ICRA, is our guest. Uh, Aditi, I don't know if you're able to see some of these numbers uh, on any phone uh, or screen that you may have in front of you. But just to read, core WPI is now minus 0.4 versus minus 1% in October. So the negativity is going away. We are almost in flat terrain. But for the uh, headline index, it's already positive, plus 0.26% uh, compared to, of course, seven months of uh, negative number. In fact, September also has been revised, high, revised to a more deflation. It was minus 0.7 percent. Uh, uh, the small poll I did gave me a similar number for October, but uh, uh, inflation for September has been revised down to minus 0.26 percent. Metals index is down 0.9 percent. Edible oils is up 0.1 percent. But as Mangalam was just telling you, Aditi, cereals are up 1.2 percent on the month. And vegetables, of course, up 16.5% on the month. I mean, why, oh, why, I think it'll be 30%. Manufactured products index has reached positive, 0.1. Uh, I hope I've given you all the important ones. Go ahead, please, your comments. Thanks, Lata. 
we had expected a small inflation to emerge in this month for the WPI. So our uh, forecast was 0.1% and it's slightly higher than what we had penciled in because of uh, the uh, food index jumping uh, faster than what we had initially penciled in uh, before having seen the CPI data. Now, um, I would say that uh, looking ahead, unless we have a sharp retracement in uh, food prices, which may not be the case across all the food categories, we should probably be prepared to see WPI inflation printing between 1% and 2% for uh, the rest of this fiscal year as that base effect goes away and things uh, normalize. So we've, uh, you know, last uh, few weeks, commodities have been a little bit on the softer side. Having taken that into account, uh, in any case, you know, the tailwind as compared to last year uh, is going away. And uh, that is something that should bring us uh, back into a 1% to 2% kind of a range for the WPI inflation over the next uh, four months. Nevertheless, globally, core yeah, globally, core inflation is falling like we saw in the US and like we saw in our own CPI. Uh, it's coming a tad lower than the month of October. So not to worry, right? Uh, the WPI numbers, the base effect wears off, but it is not as if uh, uh, things get pricier for industry, right? No, uh, in fact, uh, the Bloomberg Commodities Index, for example, has been uh, trending a little bit softer in the last few mm. weeks as compared to the trend in uh, Q2. Uh, but when we compare quarter on quarter, uh, the gap is now narrower in Q3 uh, as compared to what it was in uh, Q2. So this is more of a base effect which is playing out and not that commodities are getting pricier for industry. Okay. There it is, onion inflation. Inflation, one hundred and one percent, and that's uh, double <laughs> from a sixty-two percent yes. a month ago. Wow. Uh, well, uh, if, go if off it's onions. Supposed to maybe. last. It's supposed to be a spike, and then probably see onion. Some kind of I was told is a ninety-day product, a ninety-day okay. crop. I was told. I'm, I'm no expert on this. Aditi, uh, when does onion ebb away <laughs> and stop giving tears? Somebody told me it's ninety days crop. So after it plays out for three months, things should normalize. You tell us, uh, when do we see food inflation ebbing at all? So we do have a base effect uh, which is going to start kicking in and optically the food inflation numbers will start looking less menacing. Having said that, uh, there are problems with specific crops. Uh, you know, we discussed that that day for uh, the CPI yes. as well. Uh, for food grains, uh, you know, the Ravi season is not looking uh, so good so far. And on vegetables, uh, yes, different crops, uh, different vegetables have their own uh, cycles. The other specific problem with onions is that it's onions are grown in very few districts in our country, but they're consumed almost all over the country. Uh, and uh, that is something that uh, creates this sharper spike for uh, onions sometimes as compared to many other uh, vegetables that we have. So I would say we probably have another uh, a month or so at least of uh, onion tears. And hopefully, with uh, in Q4, things should start looking better. You know, we should not be shedding tears at all. Look at the way the US yields have fallen to yep. below 4%, 3.96 or 9.8 when I last checked. The uh, What's your overall impact? You know, the big uh, chatter in the stock markets is that if the Fed is saying that they're going to cut, start cutting by June maybe, and there are three cuts priced in next year versus the dot plot saying two cuts in the September dot chart, then can the Reserve Bank be far behind in cutting? Have your expectations changed? Lata, our expectation from the Monetary Policy Committee was that rate cards can start by August. So we were pricing in three, two to three rate cards uh, between August, October and December of next year. So if the Fed starts cutting by June or uh, July, then I think, uh, you know, our uh, uh, cut expectations would be very much aligned with uh, what uh, uh, the Fed has indicated yesterday. So uh, I wouldn't really change uh, my expectations at this point in time. And I think maybe in another couple of months, we'll have a bit more uh, clarity on how soon the Fed really intends to uh, start cutting. So is it going to be the middle of the year or is it going to get, uh, uh, you know, upfronted a little bit? Although I would still expect uh, that uh, the pause uh, will be extended out to some extent. So middle of next year is uh, what we're thinking for the Fed and August is what we're still thinking for the MPC. Okay, that's very good to hear. Uh, the markets at the moment are not pricing much in. Uh, Indian yields are down by about seven basis points. Mm. Rupees rock steady. I think RBI is uh, back uh, mm. as active as ever. So we're not seeing any difference. Just a final question, uh, Aditi, what's your... Uh, 
year end nominal GDP, uh, I mean, even real GDP for that matter, RBI is at 7, where are you? And where is your nominal GDP expectation now that WPI is turning positive? We are at about 6.5% for uh, real GDP and for nominal GDP, we are at around 9, 9.5% now uh, for this year. So a little bit lower. We had initially expected the WPI to turn positive and get into uh, the inflation zone by September or so, uh, which as we've seen has only happened now in uh, November. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that we've uh, pulled down our uh, nominal GDP forecast despite uh, upping our uh, real GDP forecast. Okay. All right. We'll leave it at that. Uh, Aditi, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, just a matter of small detail. The nominal GDP is, was calculated as 11% higher by right. the government when they made the budget. So, you know, 5.9% fiscal deficit of 11% uh, 11 11 growth higher. gives you a slightly higher, higher number. number. Now, if the nominal GDP is, is going 9%. to be 9%, the but fiscal deficit will have to be that much lower, but it's not a great deal. Nothing I mean, to worry. Out of 17 lakh crore, it may be 16.8 lakh crore. But still, there is that pinch. All Put right, Lata, thanks a lot for that. Uh, so the news from the centre, as they say, is uh, that uh, WPI inflation has turned mildly positive after eight months. And uh, nothing really to worry because uh, the lower inflation and lower rates in the US are buoying our markets higher out here. And as a result of which, the Nifty sitting with a gain of 240 points. Take a short break, come back. We focus on individual sectors. It's the pharma sector, which will be in focus. And this is something that you might be interested in. Diabetes and weight loss drugs. Ekta is going to talk about that in just a bit.